Hello and welcome to the OI and UIM integration demo video. The purpose of this video is to walk through the steps necessary to achieve a successful UIM to OI integration and the real business value and the benefit behind performing a UIM to OI integration is to enable those uh, infrastructure elements to flow and be available within OI and to enable our OI admins or operators with the ability to take those infrastructure elements and and model their business services with them. Ultimately and ideally the goal being to achieve a very holistic uh, representation of those business services um, and marrying UIM infrastructure data together with say network and application resources. So, so we're looking at the business service centrally within OI and we have as complete representation of that service as possible. So within this video, we'll walk through deployment of the required UIM probes, how to configure those probes to communicate with OI, and we'll take a look at the validation on the OI side when we finish up our configuration activities. So let's uh, jump right into the prereqs. The integration is really driven centered around two probes within UIM that facilitate the data flow to happen. And those two probes must be deployed on the primary hub robot within UIM. And they are the OI connector probe, which provides UIM alarms, QoS metrics, and groups to be sent to OI. And also the APM bridge probe, which provides the UIM inventory topology and allows that data to flow into OI. So as part of configuring those probes, there are just some OI parameters that need to be provided as part of that, that probe configuration. And they are the tenant ID, so your OI unique identifier for, for, that, for your instance of OI. Your tenant token, which enables authentication against your OI instance. And then there are a couple of endpoint URLs for the OI data stores to enable uh, the metrics, the inventory data, the alarms to be stored uh, within OI. So they are the Jarvis ingestion endpoint as well as the NAS and TAS endpoint. And as part of my demo, I'll be showing the demo uh, with the OI SAS instance, and I'll show how we can get these properties uh, within OI itself. And within the course, there's references to how to obtain these parameters for on-premise installations as well. Okay, so let's start off by logging into our UIM admin console. And what we'll do here is deploy the OI connector probe and the APM bridge probe. So here I am, here's my hub. Let me go into the web archive and I'll select OI connector and we'll select APM bridge. Okay, and with those two probes selected, I will go to deploy. I'll select my hub, and this is the robot on the primary hub. And I'll click deploy. Okay. Okay, so that looks good. They've been successfully deployed to my primary hub robot. The next step here would be to configure those probes that we just deployed. So if I click on robots here and I go into the robot for my primary hub, let's start with the OI connector probe. So I'll filter for connector. Here's my OI connector. I will click on configure and it will bring up this configuration page. Up top here, some basic probe information, name, version. I can specify my log level here of the probe. Down here is where we start to get interesting in having some freedom to scope the data that gets sent from UIM to OI. So I can subscribe to receive UIM alarms within OI, but it allows me to specify whether I want all alarms to be sent or whether I want, say, only critical major minor alarms to be sent, maybe not warning informational. And I can do that here. I can. I can filter that out. Um, similarly, down here, I can subscribe to receive UIM groups and that kind of logical organization that UIM has, I can receive 
the same thing within OI. Um, and by default, there are no groups selected. It, with that, all groups will be sent. If you prefer to scope that to a subset of your groups, you can do that here by, you know, the same way we did we did for alarm severity. Pick and choose those groups you want sent over to OI, and and you can do that here. Um, down here is where we can subscribe to receive UIM QoS metrics, so performance metrics, and you know I can I can scope and filter that by QoS origin. So essentially, this is the hub. So if I have um, you know multiple hubs out there. I can specify a subset of hubs um, in regex, or I can use the the OR operator here, the pipe uh, the the pipe character to to do that. Uh, similarly, I can specify hosts, which are robots, and I can do that here as well. And at the lowest level, I can specify the probe type that I want metric data sent from. So by default, we have all probes, all QS probes. But if I only want, say, CDM or AWS, I can I can leave these here and I can delete all the others. So just to show you some of the flexibility the OI connector has in terms of limiting the scope of data that's sent. Down here is where we get interesting in terms of um, providing those parameters, properties that enable a connection to occur between UIM and OI. So we talked about this a little bit when, when I saw, when I showed the slide deck. Um, but, 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 but there are OI parameters here we need to supply. In this case, I have an OI SAS instance running, and I'm going to show you how to do that from the SAS instance. Within the course here, uh, we, we provide the documentation that will show you how to get that for an on-prem release as well. But let me, let me walk through the SAS uh, way to do it. So default tenant ID, um, Jarvis ingestion endpoint, Within the OI SAS now, if I go into OI, within settings, we recently introduced this connector parameters page. And if I drill into that, this uh, is a great uh, new page that we introduced that provides all of these connector parameters in one location. So in, in the past, there had been a little bit of digging around that needed to occur to, to get your tenant ID know where to get your Jarvis, TAS, NAS endpoints, and your ingestion token. Um, now everything is centralized within this connector parameters page. So I will take the cohort ID, my tenant ID, come back in here. And similarly, for Jarvis ingestion endpoint, I'll go back here. And here's my Jarvis endpoint. So a note about this. For the Jarvis ingestion endpoint, um, you do need to do a slash ingestion, and then Jarvis Elasticsearch URL. We'll take this here. OK, and I don't have a proxy, um, so I have no need to enable proxy settings and, and provide uh, the proxy server and authentication information here. We'll leave that as it is. Um, but for, 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 for these properties that I do provide, uh, the UI here does allow me the ability to, to do some ver verification, some validation of what I have provided. So if I click on, say, Verify Jarvis, it will make sure that um, endpoint is there, it's available, and I can confirm that. Um, coming down here to NAS configuration, so here uh, it's looking for my NAS URL and my tenant token. Let me go back here, my NAS endpoint. Let's provide that. And my NAS tenant token, I will click on generate new token. And I can copy this agent token. And uh, just a good idea to store this token in a safe place. Um, always have it available in case um, you need to revoke it or, or any operation needs to be done against the, the token. OK. And then finally down here. We have um, the operator console, the UIM operator console. I'll provide that host name here. And my username, password. 
and the port. Okay, and I can ver validate this connection as well. Okay, that looks good. I'll validate uh, this also. Okay, great. So the OI connector is looking good. I can save this. Great. Okay. So let's now move back here. I'll close this out. And we will configure the APM bridge probe. Oh, let's first activate it. Okay. So it's activated. We can come in here and for the APM bridge probe, um, we do have to use the probe utility. So let's click on that. Okay, and we'll start with um, calling this configure UIM API endpoint callback um, to configure the APM bridge connection to UIM API. So there's a few things we need to set here, and that is the host server for the web, app, web application uh, service probe. So in this case, it's my uh, the same one up here. Okay. Oops. Okay. A port here is 80. My username is administrator. Okay. And here I will provide my password. Okay. And we will click send command. Okay, next we'll go to add profile and we'll, we'll call this add profile callback to configure access to uh, DXOI API. Um, so let's start here with, let's see, um, start with the host. So in this case, the host is going to be um, this. TAS endpoint. Okay. And I can take this off again. Port here is 443. Um, let me specify my token. Okay, and in this case, I am using SSL, so I'll specify true. And I'll specify my hub uh, name here as my origin. Okay, so I think this looks good as well. button to send the profile. Okay. And now if I go back to my admin console, I can actually click on APM bridge. I'll go to view log in a new window and um, take a look at the log. Make sure that um, the CIs are coming across. I had some errors up here based on a previous configuration, but he down here we can see that the um, the vertices are being sent over. I have uh, two is, a, again, a small environment, but I can see that it has done updating the inventory, and that looks good. So in, in a similar way, I can look at the Y connector probe, and let's just take a look. Go to view log. And here we can just do some validation that we see some alarms coming over so here um, yep looks like we see some so the event processor working and I can see oh, UIM alarms being sent over total number of UIM posted um, so it looks like we have um, the inventory coming over we have the alarms coming over 
So everything is looking pretty good. Uh, I think we're at a point now where we can probably switch over to um, OI and take a look at uh, the data over there, make sure it's flowing over. Okay. Okay, so back into OI here. Let's go into DXOI and let's take a look at the alarms first. We click on alarms. Okay, and what I'm looking for are alarms coming from UIM. Here I see some that just came in within the last minute, last minute or two um, on that um, robot. So that looks good. Looks like we, we have the alarms flowing in here. Um, next step is to test to see that we have the entities coming over the topology inventory from UIM. So for that, let me go into services and I'll create a new service here. And for monitoring domain, UIM facilitates infrastructure. So let's do that. Okay, great. I see my UIM group here as my base attribute. And I, I, I only have one within my UIM instance. I have operating system windows and that's here. Okay, I'll add that to this new service that I'm creating. I'm just gonna call it UIM here because we wanna test out and make sure we have uh, the two servers that are within that group on the UIM side. We wanna make sure that they've come over to OI. So I'll click on add elements here. Okay, let's save that. Okay, it may take a minute for the service to be created. Okay, and there it is, UIM service. If I click into this, let's take a look at the, the, the topology here. And there's my two um, servers within UIM that are, are part of that group. Okay, so this, this looks good. If I look at the monitoring inventory for that service, I see those here and I can um, view alarms against these. Um, if I go back here, I can also view uh, performance analytics. So look at the metrics that are being sent over. So let's go to metrics. Okay. And now I'm looking at uh, the QoS metric data that's been sent from UIM, and I can see that within OI as well. So we've seen the, the alarms being sent over from UIM, the entities in order to construct services, and finally, the performance metrics um, are being sent over as well. So you know, really kind of opening the doors to model infrastructure data within OI and services is what those two probes facilitate and, and that's basically what I wanted to show as part of this video is the, the setup of uh, the probes and how they facilitate this integration. Uh, thanks for watching and take care.